Hello, our dear students, and welcome back to this set of TV sessions. Today we'll be covering session four, which is about urban exodus. I am very pleased to welcome my dear student, Maysoon. Thank you. Welcome again. Hope you are doing well. I'm doing great. Okay. Maysoon, uh, do you live in the city or in the countryside? Uh, actually, I live in the city. You live in the city. Are you satisfied with your life in the city? Yes, to a certain extent. To a certain extent. Good. Mason, I would like to begin by showing you these statements. I would like you to read and choose the statement or the alternative you think is the right one. Generally, people tend to, and you are given three alternatives, read and choose. Shall I start? Please do. Okay, generally people tend to avoid leaving their hometowns, whatever happens. Oh, you started with B. With B. Because that's because, what's happening because nowadays, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, or um, migrate from the city to the, to the, from the countryside to the city, that's okay. A. Or migrate from the city to the countryside. Mm. I think generally people tend to migrate from the countryside to the city. So you think that the most general tendency yes. of people is migrate or move from the countryside to the city. To the city, right. Um, if we take into consideration the present exceptional circumstances, then even B would make sense. Yes. I mean, avoid leaving their hometowns, whatever happens, in order not to catch the virus or make it spread. Yes, but, but people cannot move. That's they cannot right. go to the countryside right. now. So you opt for A. Yes, I think that's your most final people, choice. Uh, move from the countryside to the city. Let's see. So in general, people tend to migrate from the countryside to the city. To the city, yes. That's absolutely. right. Most people take this uh, or show this tendency or this desire. The question that comes to our mind is if you ask about a reason or a purpose, what's, which WH word do you use? Why? Why? You are right. So why move to the city? Actually, because of many reasons. Uh, because in the city we have um, maybe more amenities, okay. um, more facilities. Right. Like um, people, if they want to entertain themselves, they, they find so many places like cafes, more restaurants. That's right. More leisure centers or sports centers, shopping malls, theaters, yeah, exactly. cinemas, ex and even services, uh, hospital, uh, companies, firms, different... What uh, about young people? Those? Uh, those who have finished their studies or... University, yes, uh, this is mainly uh, education. Education okay, reasons? Okay. I actually intend to, uh, to mention it. So first because we have more amenities, more facilities. I think also because uh, in the city we have better prospects, uh, better job opportunities. Better job or employment opportunities, yes. that's right. In the city it's easier to get a job than in the countryside. Yes. And I think, that, uh, I think also that there are more jobs available in the city than in the countryside. That's right. Actually, uh, uh, you are reminding me of a Tunisian rap singer who sang a song about this migration from the countryside to the city and particularly to the capital. You know the song? Uh, I think. Uh, and I you know the singer? Uh, I know him, but I just him, don't he, remember he's, him. He's so famous I, among, I among the, people your age. Uh, it's a great song. Yeah. Yes, I liked it. Coming from the, the countryside, countryside to, to the capital, he To said. the capital, yes. yes. And the capital he center. depicts in a very emotional way the suffering and the problems that those, this kind of people face yes. when they go to the city. Because there are regional disparities. Oh, of course. So yeah, it's so not easy to get used to the new yes. life. Um, I think another reason is, yes. as you You've stated... You've got more reasons? Uh, yes, better education. Better education uh, opportunities. Better schools and, and better conditions. school facilities. And nearly all universities are in the city. Right. So people, or as you said, teenagers who want to go to university, it's better uh, for them to live in, this, in the city than in the countryside. Okay. And I remember in Unit 2, when talking about education in the unit of uh, that talks about education, yes. I remember we saw together that we have higher rates of dropping out of school True. in rural areas True. or in the True. countryside because uh, we have less school facilities, they are remote, uh, etc. So there are fewer education facilities in the country than in the city. Yes. 
That's I think right. also there are better roads, uh, modern means of transport, and it is easier for people to, to get around when in the city than in the countryside. Totally right. You so these are, are the reasons that come to my mind now. Yeah, it's not wonder that you cling to living in the, in the city. You. Let's see whether the reasons you mentioned will appear on the screen or not. So first reason, better prospects, better job opportunities. You did mention that. Yes. Um, second reason, better standards of living. What do you mean by that? Uh, it means uh, we have more facilities, more amenities. There are places to go for entertainment, shopping malls, That's right. et cetera. Could, you, could we make a compound noun instead of saying standards of living? Uh, a compound noun? Yes. With the standard of living? Mm. Uh, living standards. Living standards. Good student. Next, uh, more amenities and facilities in the city, and you mentioned that. Nothing to add. Well done, Maysoon. Better education. education. Cannot agree more. There are better education facilities, facilities especially yes. higher education. Why that choice? Even, even, uh, even high schools, they, even are high equipped, schools. they are equipped with technology. That's for right. In the countryside, students might walk long distances, kilometers. kilometers. To, uh, and it's, it's among yeah. the reasons that so they drop out. So commuting to school and back is tiring and does not encourage parents to send their kids to school. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, right. Better roads and modern means of transport, you mentioned that. Now, the movement of people from the countryside to the city, do you know what it is called? Uh, no, but I'll I can. help you. Yes. I'll help you. I'll give you the initial letters of the two words that make up the name. So things are getting easier now, Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the title of the lesson uh, is helping me. So go ahead. Because it talks about urban exodus. And this is? And the opposite of urban is rural, so I guess it's rural exodus. Which one is related to the country? Rural. Rural exodus, so. We saw this before. Excellent. Let's me check. Well done. Rural so it's versus rural urban, exodus. country versus the city life. And. Um, we cannot deny the fact that there are people also who make the opposite move or the reverse move from the city to the countryside. It is true that in terms of figures or rates, they do not represent a majority, but the number is increasingly getting higher and higher. So... I don't think these are teenagers or... Yeah, maybe older age range. Maybe, yes, you are people, right. Maybe. Yes. What type of exodus do you think this is? This reverse move from the city to the country? I can guess. If it is the opposite of rural exodus, uh, it might be uh, urban exodus. Urban exodus, let me check. You guessed right and you did not need to look at the initial letters. Splendid as always. Thank you. That's very good. You did say that not many people are tempted by moving to the country unless you said they are elderly people or retired people. That's right. Uh, we are going to try to come up with the definition of urban exodus. I'm going to provide you with a short definition with a few missing words in the box, which you'll have to add to the paragraph. OK. So the words are dwellers, healthy and movement, moment. and this is the paragraph to complete. Could you read it, please? Yes. Uh, shall I start? Please do. OK. Urban exodus is the movement okay. of city dwellers from the city to the countryside, looking for healthier and more peaceful conditions of life. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It looks easy, easy, but let's, let's check. So it's the movement, or we used another word that begins with M. Migrating. The migration. Of oh, the migration, the noun, yes. Yes, of city dwellers. Are you familiar with the word dwellers? No, but I could guess it Great. from the context. This, Great. It cannot be healthier. It cannot be... Uh, so I, city dwellers? I may understand these are people who live in the city, resident or inhabitant of the city. Well done. And the last word is obviously looking for Because healthier. you have more peaceful and parallel structure right. in the so comparative, comparative form here. Well thought of. I like your um, strategy and it is a very fruitful one. Now uh, you are going to be exposed to a passage uh, you're going to read it, and then you'll have to decide whether this passage deals with the push or the pull factors of urban exodus. The words push and pull are written differently, and I'm sure they ring the bell. Yes, we saw them in the lesson, I think, in Unit 3, Lesson uh, 6, the brain drain. Okay. Yes, push factors are the disadvantages, 
uh, these are the factors that push someone to leave okay. a place and mainly they are negative sides or negative factors that force the person to leave a place and go or seek uh, uh, to live in another place. The pull, they pull. They attract they you, attract. so they must be yes, the advantages. They be the advantages of, of the life in the uh, in the countryside. Yeah, it's in the countryside. Yes. Okay. So I should now read and uh, decide if, whether the text speaks about the push factors, that is, the disadvantages of, of life in the city. Of moving from uh, the of life in the city, or the pull factors, the advantages of life in the countryside. Countryside. Yes. Okay. You read the text, please. Okay. The search of the number of young families living in London was revealed today. An official report shows that 25 to 44 age group is leading the mass migration to the countryside, suggesting that the urban exodus is being led by young parents and their children. So it's not old people. Yeah, exactly. There, the atmosphere is vibrant and the rural economy is booming despite the crisis in farming. Thus, new jobs have been created in the last decade. The report shows that men in the countryside enjoy better health and longer life expectancy as they outlive their urban counterparts by 18 months. Peak levels of harmful ozone in the countryside air has fallen by about 30% and populations of wild birds have leveled out after two decades of decline, indicating a clean environment and a good air quality. Mm, I think it's easy for you to answer. Yes, I think it is with the pull factors. The pull factors, that is? Uh, that is the advantages of the countryside or the advantages of life in the countryside. Could you uh, mention some of the advantages mentioned yes, here? Yes, I can see uh, longer life expectancy, so yes. better health and longer life expectancy. Good. Good. So people outlive their urban counterparts by 18 months. Uh, I can also see that we talk about the air quality. So it, it falls by about 30%. That's right. Uh, and, uh, so cleaner air. Cleaner air. And um, uh, we, I can also see that uh, the atmosphere is vibrant. That's right. Uh, vibrant, maybe, I know the words, uh, yeah. when something is vibrant, it's colorful, so exactly. it's, it's lively. Or the, the, the kind of relationship between people. Yes, so are these ones. are the advantages that I can see. That's in this, good. Uh, so the economy is booming, helping people yeah, to Yeah, it's to no longer limited to, uh, to farming. Yes. Right. So you definitely go for pull factors. Pull factors. Pull factors. Let's see. The text deals with the pull factors. That's good of urban exodus. That is the advantages of country life. You did mention the advantages mentioned in the text. Let's check whether the ones that will appear were mentioned in the text. So the first one, better health, fresh air, and a clean environment. You picked out this advantage a few minutes ago. That's good. The second one, longer life expectancy. And you did mention that it means people live uh, but it's longer. It's a new word, but I could understand the That's meaning good. because we, uh, the sentence already is giving us another word: outlive their counterparts. So, by, so I could I could just guess the. Uh, you the came meaning. up to the meaning yourself. And well I done. hope uh, it's the right meaning. It is the right meaning. Actually, life expectancy um, can be used in geography and can be used in different contexts. We say that, for example, women have got longer life expectancy than men. It means they they live longer. Uh, of course, uh, on average. Third, a vibrant atmosphere, and you did mention that. Now, could you add other benefits of life in the countryside which were not mentioned in the text? Oh, uh, yes, uh, maybe um, the slow pace of life. Uh, I think that life in the countryside often moves slowly. That's right. Uh, which is more relaxed, and uh, so it is more relaxed and less stressful. That's right. Uh, another maybe uh, advantage is um, the strong community. People are close to each other. People have very close relationship with That's each good. other. They know each other That's very good. well, which create a great or a good or a big support network. So uh, they are very close. They know each other very well. And it's it's strong community and a close and strong right. support network. Um, That's all. I think it's quite calm. It is. It's not noisy. It There's is. no traffic, no industry, no, no, no building work, uh, nothing. So it's quite calm. Yes. And maybe uh, the food uh, is healthier. Fresh, Have you, that's right. organic. Organic food, healthier food. Homemade bread. 
for example. Yes. Most country women especially are good at making bread at home, baking bread at home. And uh, uh, life in the countryside is cheaper. Cheaper, that's right. It's cheaper. And safer. And safer. <laughs> Have you ever been robbed of your mobile in the city? Uh, yes. Yes, me too. Not only mobile me phones. <laughs> Money uh, as more well. violence. They have more That's violence right. in the. You nearly mentioned all the benefits, but let's check. So yes, slow pace of life, less stressful condition than in the city. Um, lower crime rates. We spoke about the issue of That's safety. Yes, I, I didn't mention this. It just uh, happened. Yeah, I just drew it. your attention to it. Yes. Um, quiet and peaceful surrounding, that's less your idea, noise, especially less people, less romantic people. It calls for inspiration and it triggers right, imagination, that's right. Um, cheaper cost of life and stronger sense of community. So you mentioned most of them. So I need a bonus. Uh, you'll get it, don't worry. Do not be demanding. I know people in the city are demanding, and people in the country, all students actually. And it's your right because your performance has been br brilliant so, so far. It. You deserve it. It's not a favor. Now I would like you to match each word in A with its meaning in B. Have a look at the words in A and look for their equivalents in B. Okay, so the first one is vibrant, yes. and I guess I could understand its meaning, and you helped me also. So it should be. Exciting, lively. Exciting and lively. What's the noun of vibrant? We saw it before. What's that? The noun of vibrant. Uh, I can't remember. Vibrancy. Vibrancy. We saw it in the text about Huda Baraka, the Egyptian student who had the experience of studying both in the UK I and in the United now. States. I can remember and now. And she was comparing the two systems yes. and she was showing uh, support for the British system yes, rather than the American yes. one. Yes, I do remember. Okay. So, yes, exciting and lively, well done, good start. Second word? Well, booming is a new word, uh, but you taught us that if it is ing, you should look for an ing, okay. an adjective, I look for an adjective, so I'm doing this. Okay. Great, I think applying what we studied. Uh, yes, uh, booming, maybe, it was for the economy, it appeared to be the economy, economy that's right. booming, so I think it is growing or being successful. There's another word with th. Thriving. Thriving, well done. Next, please. Oh, that's an easy word. A we get used to it. We, yes, we, a we've seen uh, it so many times in many lessons. And a decade is a period of 10 years. Yes. If I tell you I am five and five decades and a half old, uh, 50 and a half? Uh, 55. 55. Do not shout. Ah, half a decade. Do not shout. 55. Everybody would know about my age. <laughs> 55. 25. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, 25. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So it's 10 years, yes. What about four? Uh, you explained this to I me. Did. You gave the example of women have longer life expectancy. And you liked it. I liked it, of <laughs> course. So um, I guess it's the number of years a person is likely to live. Yeah, exactly. So, and Definitely right. To outlive somebody. Uh, it appeared in the same sentence. So it they did. have longer life expectancy because they outlive That's their right. urban counterparts by, I think, uh, 18 months. Yeah, uh, one year and a half. You are so right. they live longer. To live they longer, live to longer, outlive somebody. Which is C. To outlive somebody, to live longer. You are right. Actually, out means more or longer. So there is to outperform somebody, to perform better than him to outrun somebody, it's like over. To, run, to run faster than him. There is even to outgrow. My little brother has what? outgrown his clothes, especially during this lockdown period. He spends so all his time people eating. Are, yes. <laughs> what they about are six? just uh, sitting uh, and, and eating. eating yeah. Yeah. No activity, no sport. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just eating. Yes. What about peak? Uh, well, peak is a word that I don't know. Okay. So I will do the seven first already okay, no i'm problem. left oh, with that's a nice strategy i'm left with two words okay so and the, the word uh, number seven the do word it the way you think is right yes is a, a word i know decline decline so it's uh, decrease decrease and get and, back to uh, six i guess peak is the highest level the highest level i mean i'm not so sure the highest level is be. correct the peak of the mountain to the top the summit the top the top and decline as you said decrease so you did a wonderful job. I can only applaud your performance, Maysuna. Thank you. Now, we, 
we focus on the pull factors of urban exodus because those were the ones mentioned in the text. Now, could you add some push factors? And here we'll be focusing on what? On the disadvantages of the city life. Of city life. These are the factors that force people to Exactly. Live, live in the city has many drawbacks. drawbacks. Uh, can okay. you mention some of them? Yes. Uh, it's easy. Just the opposite of... Uh, so, I always say the advantages of the country are the disadvantages, disadvantages right. of the... Absolutely right. So if uh, we talk about the slow pace of life, I think we talk here about the fast pace That's of life. That's right. So it's less relaxed and more stressful. Good. More pollution, That's air right. pollution, mainly because of traffic, uh, road transport. And still you cling to living in the city? Yes, of course. Okay, of course, carry as on. a student, my future is here, it cannot be in the countryside. Right. Um, another drawback, uh, I think, uh, noisy and um, stressful. You uh, drew my attention to the lower uh, crime rates in the countryside. True. So I think we have higher. Uh, uh, higher uh, crime rates in the country, in the, in city. the city. Sorry, so we have more violence. So life is less safe in the city less than safe, in the country. Less safe, secure in the city than in the country. Um, I also think uh, it's the cost of life is more. It's expensive. costly, exactly. It's expensive cost of life. That's uh, right. Now you have, you can, you can. High cost of life. Yes, everything is expensive. That's right. Uh, what else? And relationships between mm. people. Cold relationships. Cold relationships. Do you know your next door neighbor's name? You know, sometimes they, don't ev they, they do not even agree. That's right. When they meet in the corridor, they don't, they don't even say yeah, good morning. Yeah, people in the countryside are closer to each other, uh, show more intimate and warmer and more, warm more, and more, they are more spontaneous close. relationships. Yes. Closer. Maybe because people in the city are always in a hurry. That's the, right. The, they are rushing. The, the, yes, the faces. So they have no time to uh, True. for maybe uh, warm relationships. Yes. These are the drawbacks yeah, I can... Yeah, you uh, nearly mentioned everything. So, first drawback, so high crime rates, so life is not safe in the city, you are right. So, there are robberies, there are crimes of killing, and uh, all sorts of violence, etc. Bullying, cold relationships with people, we mentioned that. Um, pollution in the city, did you mention that? Yes, I said air pollution, air pollution, mainly because mainly. of uh, traffic and road Definitely transport. right. Fast and stressful pace of life, that's right, people are in a hurry. Expensive cost of life, you insist on that. Um, unhealthy food. I didn't so, mention this. But you spoke about healthy food in healthy the country. Healthy food, so. yes. So the food in the city people is People always uh, resort to fast food that's because right. of the that's pace right. of Which life. is not good for health. Huh? We saw this in lesson one. Exactly, good memory. Overcrowded and noisy conditions in the city, especially in these uh, circumstances, we have to avoid overcrowded conditions so that the virus does not spread. That's right, it's quite. That's right. So you nearly mentioned everything, that's great. Um, but does this mean that life in the countryside is perfect, Maison? Of course it is of not. Of course not. Nothing is perfect. And there are, I think, many drawbacks. Uh, um, Actually, I think it's boring, for example. You said you insist that despite yes. all the advantages You of would the feel country, bored. Yes, I think I, I... You might go for a holiday, but not to stay forever yes, or permanently. Yes, if it is a temporary period of time, uh, to you, relax you maybe, can't stand to get the rid boring of stress. Conditions. But I cannot live there permanently. So I think it's boring. Yes. And it's boring because of the lack of facilities, of shopping centers, true, true. Uh, entertaining, entertaining uh, centers or entertaining... Recreational facilities. Yes, facilities. I also think that... Um, Although it is good to have strong relationship, to have strong community or close relationship, yes. or warm relationship yes. with each other or with other people, um, sometimes you lack privacy That's in the right. countryside. So people in the country are know, nosy. Know they keep poking you. their nose into other people's they know private everything life. About you, so you have no privacy. That's right. This they spy on you. They gossip about you. They don't That's right. have to spy. Everything is. <laughs> <laughs> They know everything, yeah, but it's easy yeah. to know everything That's right. about them. That's right. So um, you cannot enjoy your privacy. Yes. And I think also the roads, the infrastructure, the infrastructure is, bad. is falling and bad. And if you live in the countryside, you'd better have your own means of transport uh, to uh, get around. Otherwise, be 
would be difficult to move from one place Absolutely to right. another because uh, uh, they lack means That's or right. modern means of transport. And even economy, it's based on farming, farming, farming. limited to farming. Yeah, of course. And farming is not easy, by the way. They have to get up very early at dawn, imagine in winter, snowy weather, yes. or in summer, burning sun and they had to, to expose themselves to hard uh, weather conditions yes. so it's not easy at all it's really and tough uh, isn't it's it it's not easy to find a job uh, that's right there are not um, there aren't many jobs available yes maybe there should uh, be the more investment in the countryside so it, i think it's not uh, the perfect place for a teenager or for a to graduate start, to start uh, his career to or start his a life. career yes unless he's interested in farming and he's devoted to it yes and it's good because Exceptional. You mentioned lots of beautiful ideas. What I um, suggest you do now is have a look at the expression that will appear one after the other. You will be exposed to seven different expressions, but only five of them apply to the drawbacks of life in the country. Two of them do not apply to the drawbacks. That means the they country. apply to the city. Normally, to the drawbacks yes, of the exactly. city. Exactly. So just identify or um, recognize or point out to the ones that relate to the drawbacks of country life. Okay. We begin with the first one. Busy roads and heavy traffic. That's uh, the city life. That's the city. Of course, that's a drawback yeah. of the city. That's your daily battle. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so it has <laughs> nothing to do with Second. country life. Fewer amenities, no services. That's a drawback of the country life. True, yes. true. Third? Lack of means of entertainment. Still, this is another uh, drawback. Uh, of and it is one of the reasons why you don't intend to settle yeah, in the country. Of course, we, people get bored after a lot of stress, you are after right. exams, you are after right. uh, hard they work. They need to change the They atmosphere. need, yes, to renew their energy. They need to entertain themselves. Yes, so to I recharge their batteries. It's important. Entertainment okay. is very important. Okay, next. Cold relationships. Uh, this is a drawback of the city life. People in the city have cold relationships. Okay, However, in so the it does not apply to the country? No, no, it's not. Next, please. Bad infrastructure. This is one of the drawbacks of the country life. One of the uh, serious drawbacks yes, uh, of life in the country. Bad infrastructure, quality of roads. The roads, etc. yes. The means of transport. Exactly. Limited job opportunities. Still, and again, it's a drawback of the countryside. That's right. So have less job opportunities, less jobs available. And even people who want to advance in their careers, uh, get yes, promotion, it's not easy. have a comfortable life. They are in deadlock, uh, that's right. It's a bit difficult for them to do this in the country or when they are in the country. Definitely true. And last? Lack of privacy. You mentioned this. The country life. In the countryside. Yes, because the community is very close. That's so right. they know everything about you and then you have no private exactly. life. Exactly. So which two drawbacks apply to the city, not to the country? The first one, busy roads and heavy traffic. And? And cold relationships. Let's check. Well done. They are colored. Red. So the others refer to the drawbacks of life in the countryside. In the countryside. Well done. Right. Now I would like to express the following statement differently and begin as indicated. Could you read the statement first? Yeah. So despite the healthier life in the countryside, many people still prefer to live in the city. So despite it's the healthier just life just in the like countryside, me. sorry. Uh, like me. Like you. Just Many like people still prefer to, to live, live in, in the, the city. city. Now, is there a cause and result relationship between? No, no. no? We have a contrast. We have two opposite ideas. So uh, normally, there is if we have, if if the life is healthier, we should opt for it. So, so these ideas unexpected do not go or together. illogical result. Illogical, it doesn't go yes. with the cause. So I would like you to try to express this differently, replacing despite by although. Yes, we saw this before. So we, we did. Consolidated, we did. So uh, I think we can say, although it is healthier to live in the countryside, many people still prefer to live in the city. Okay, let's or check. Or we can also say, although, can we also Your say... Your answer is correct. Could you read it again, please? Although it is healthier to live in the countryside, many people still prefer to live in the you city. You have another possibility. Yes, I think you can say, although life in the countryside is healthier, healthier Many people still prefer to live in the city. That's good. City. That's good. So what's the difference between despite and although, Maison? After despite, we have the healthier life. So we have no, a noun. We, have a we noun. need a noun. We need a noun. However, after although, we have 
subject plus verb, it is or life is. So after all, we have a clause. A clause, excellent. Yes. Uh, even, if, even though the meaning is the same, the structure is different. Well done, nothing to add. Actually, although, or though, or even though, plus clause, that is subject and verb. So please whereas, take notes. Of course. Whereas with despite and in spite of, we need a noun or a verb plus ing. Uh, these, of course, are used to express Opposition, opposition or, contrast, or contrast, or as you said, ideas, uh, a cause and an unexpected or any yes, logical result. Yes. Well done, Mason. So far, you are doing a good job. Um, and homework? Uh, homework, of course. Uh, I'm sure you will get involved in this homework assignment because it will give you the chance to release your own opinions, emotions, and attitudes. Could you read the topic first? Okay, your friend thinks of moving to the countryside. He sent you an email to ask for your opinion about his decision. Write him a 12-line reply to express your attitude towards his choice and give arguments to support your point of view. So you are supposed to write a reply to your friend and it should who, be 12 line. who intends to uh, move to the countryside. A 12-line one, yes. No more. No more. You have to stick to the recommendations and instructions okay. in the official exam as well, please. Of course. Listen. So you are going to give your... Opinion. Opinion. Either encourage him to move to the current country or discourage, discourage him. him. So it's essentially an opinion writing, isn't it? Yes. Right. So it's an what do we use to express, to express opinion? And general views or the, f the most used ones are I think that or I believe that. There are also other expressions like in my opinion or um, uh, for me, okay. uh, as I see. Uh, to my mind. To my mind. To my mind. Uh, we can also say, in my personal point Excellent. of view. Excellent. Beautiful yes, expressions. Okay. Are, uh, so you varied expressions of opinion. You mentioned most of them. So there's I think or I believe that. In my opinion, to my mind, I would say that. In my personal point of view, from my personal point of view, um, as far as I am concerned, as for me and as to me. Can I say according to me? No, you can't. It's always according to somebody so else. So it's according to you, according to him, so, but not according so to me. So this one should be in my opinion. It's just repeated, but we yes. say from my point of view. Yes. Right. In my so, uh, personal opinion, just exactly. added the, the word. So uh, just uh, we don't say, as you said, according it's to me. It's always according, according to somebody to him, else. According Absolutely. to you, but not yes. according to me. So in the introduction, you state your opinion clearly without giving arguments. Of so course, for example, what yes. can you say? Um, I think that uh, you'd better stay in the city. Okay. And here I don't give any argument. Or I can say, I think that uh, there are good reasons Excellent. to stay in the city or it's a bad idea to move to the country. I would encourage you to stay yes, in the city in rather the city than, than move, to, move the to the countryside. Country. And I stop. That's right. So you just state your opinion. Of course, in the next part, you support your opinion with? Arguments. Arguments. I should uh, give as many arguments as possible. Okay. And Do you they need should to, be link, sound. to link between those arguments to of use course. connectors? Of course. So they should be linked. What should you use before the first argument? Before the first argument, generally we use first, to begin with, to start with, or firstly. That's good. Let's check. So first, to start with, to begin with, in fact, firstly, first and foremost, if you want to, to highlight yes. one of the reasons. And there is a comma, there is always a comma after That's the right. linkers, because and it affects the, letters. Exactly. Uh, the, the, the evaluation, it yes. affects my mind. Yes, the student will be penalized for that, you are definitely right, so pay attention to capitalization and punctuation, punctuation and spelling, this is part of the mechanics. Yes. Now, um, you need linkers of what? Addition, mainly, Addition. because like I'm here going to add arguments and you have the same idea. Maybe I will be talking about the advantages of the city. So, like, uh, besides, like, moreover, furthermore, in addition. That's good. Uh, there are plenty of linkers of addition. I may also use enumeration linkers, like second, third, but it's better to well use done. here, as it is an argumentative uh, uh, text or essay, it's better to use, to vary That's right. uh, the linkers. So the linkers were already mentioned, besides, moreover, over, furthermore. And we can alternate the first argument besides the second one. I can exactly. use furthermore, then in addition. 
exactly. added to this, etc. Um, you don't have to mention lots of arguments. You know, it's just 12 lines. So three, four arguments. But again, we need to use the, reinvest the arguments we have exactly. seen together in the lesson. Exactly. And you might give some e examples. But before that, before the last argument you use, finally, eventually, what else? And last but not last least. Last but not this least. Time, uh, one of them or this thinker comes yes. just before I told the you, last argument. I told you that you might need to give some examples. In this yes. case, what do you use? Uh, for example, for instance, such as. That's good. So these are expressions we use when giving examples. So for example, for instance, such as, that's good. Right. Um, then. What are you supposed to write about? Conclusion. Conclusion. What are you supposed to say in it? Maybe I restate my opinion. I recommend something. So summer. you remind the reader of your opinion. Yes. You restate it in different of, words. Uh, Do you give further arguments in the conclusion no, part? No, no, you don't. No, finish with the arguments. We never give arguments in the conclusion. Okay. You uh, already taught us and you said this so many times, sir, so I know it now. I never <laughs> well do done. it. Well done, you learned the I lesson. I never do it. So in the conclusion part, you just restate your opinion, you sum it up, yes. uh, you sum up your ideas, and you may start your conclusion with? To sum up as a conclusion. Uh, to, conclude, to conclude, in short. Yes. In a nutshell, uh, for all those reasons, yes. and you restate your opinion. Uh, remember, of course, the criteria that should be taken into consideration before you are granted your mark. So first, adherence to context, yes. that is, you have to content, that is, you have to speak about what you are asked to speak about. Here you are going to give your opinion about the decision of your friend and then give arguments for or against that decision. And so it is important to it use, I think that, or exactly. I believe it's that, otherwise it's, it's not it's an it's an opinion just writing. Uh, a paragraph, not an argumentative That's paragraph. That's right. The second criterion is, of course, language accuracy. And this includes two components or ingredients, which are vocabulary. Appropriate use exactly. of vocabulary. You've and been, grammar, you told of course. Us this also. And we did speak told. about the mechanics, including? Capitalization. Punctuation and spelling of and words. And spelling, the exactly. Correct spelling of words. Uh, how long will this take you, this homework assignment take you? Uh, I promise to write it as soon as possible, so it won't take long. I know, I know, um, especially as it is motivating because you get involved in it and you yes, want to convince yes, your friends. Say, no, 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 we should not go. Not to go, please <laughs> don't go. go, you will regret it yes. later. Stay in the city. Stay in the city. If Everything is pretty. Yeah, not pretty, <laughs> but it's better. It's better for his future, for his prospects. For That's right. I do respect any opinion. We do not judge students' opinions, we judge the quality of, of what course, they the are. Which, as it is supported exactly. with sound arguments, it would be okay, whatever is the opinion, of course. And you did mention the fact that in the conclusion we never include new ideas or, or arguments. arguments. Thank you for reminding us of this. And thank you, sir, for this good lesson. I really liked it and enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching us. Hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Uh, may soon see you next time. See you My next time. My dear students, enjoy your revision uh, a few days from now and you will get back to school, and hopefully. Good luck. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.